where we left off we had a product showing and this button here that when we clicked on it it would show the cart but no way to get back and the only way to show that page again or that view was to refresh the page so we're going to change that in the code now and what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a little image here that is going to be our continue shopping so we put it in its own div so that we can move it around to wherever we like and then we set on click continue shopping now we need to write that javascript and do that so we've got this function here continue shopping and the only thing that this is going to do is first it's going to find the products div and make it visible and it's going to turn the cart div uh, invisible or hidden so if we save that and go back we have to refresh here when I click on the add cart you see that now the continue shopping button is there when I click on that it shows this div so that's all we're doing is showing and hiding divs and that's what we're gonna do for a lot of our so this next part here we're gonna do a little bit of programming nothing that shows up uh, immediately in the visual aspect of the browser but it's first uh, important to understand that we need to pass information uh, around for example we need to pass information from the products when I select one over to the cart and so how you pass this information around is uh, it can be a little tricky especially if you're going to new pages or you're going to new websites um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it very simple and we're gonna use actually what's called the uh, document object model or the DOM of HTML and actually store things in the nodes so I found this cute little tree here that kind of showed uh, the the DOM in a in a cute little way so we've we've got the head uh, and we got beginning of HTML and then we've got the body and in the body you got these two div divs you know we've got products and cart but here they've got I you know content and menu and then these are children of that object and this is a child of that object and this is how it is organized there's probably some better charts that show this visually but if you look back at our code we can see here that we've got this uh, products div here and a child of that product is this div here which has an ID of 001 and a child of that div is this image right here now what's a little bit uh, not obvious is that this div here is in a sense the a, a brother or sister or sibling of this div um, but it also has a child even though it's not explicitly stated and that's this right here and this is actually a text node you just write the text in there and it creates this child so what we're gonna do is if you look down in our cart here we have this cart images uh, that's a little div and you see that there's no children in there and that's where we're going to add a node to put in the new items but we first want to look to see if that item is already in there we don't want uh, we could but we don't want to have multiple um, items of the of the same uh, price or type or even product ID so what we're going to do first is we're going to say um, this is a way to declare a variable and this is called the cart item images not that clever and I said well give me uh, that cart item images object there that div uh, down there so now I can refer it by this name instead of having to do this every time and once I do that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call a function called find if it exists find if ID exists and that's um, my function right here that I haven't written yet and what I'm gonna pass to it is this cart item images and this is an object an object of my cart images and I'm gonna say find the one that has this ID now remember when we add to cart we pass the item to add here so we're gonna say that that item is gonna have a, a, an ID of cart item plus item to add so the first thing would be cart item plus uh, 001 and we're just gonna say uh, tell me whether you found that or not so found found no count is a variable and it's going to equal whatever find if ID exists. So let's write that function. Up here we got the find if the ID exists, and it expects an object, and then an ID. And I'm going to find out if this object or this ID exists in this object. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a node list. 
Okay, and so this is going to be a list of all the nodes uh, that are, in a sense, children of this object. And so I'm saying, I don't want everything. I don't want images and text and everything. I just want, uh, give me the list of nodes that are children of this object with the type div. Now, we'll limit it, and that's all I'm looking for here. And then I'm going to do a for loop. I'm going to start with 0. I shouldn't have to. I could have started with 1. And then I'm going to say, hey, as long as the node number is less than the node list length, well, that's a good reason to start with 0 then, uh, then add one more and look at the next one. And it says, well, if the node list node number, so the first one would be 0, if that ID equals the ID I'm passing in, then return that node number plus 1, because we start with 0, so the first one would be 0, add 1. We'll return that. If I get all the way through this for loop, all the way through the node list, um, and I don't find it, then just return 0. OK, so again, I'm using the doc document object model to store my information. In the old days, 100 years ago when I learned programming, I spent a lot of time with data structures and, and how to keep information and how to pass that information around. And I'm just going to use the document itself to store the information. Um, so that I can find the information and change it and pass it around. So that's this step right now. And again, we've done all of this, created the functions and uh, the variables, but nothing that would change visually on the page. Okay, so after we write this function to find out if the node exists or not, uh, we're going to then assume, after if it doesn't exist, that we want to add it. So we say if the found node count is completely equal in type and value to zero, then we're going to do something. Now we're going to do something else if the node does exist, increment the count and the price and everything. But if it doesn't exist, we're going to add it now. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have this variable card, the cart item to add. Now some people don't like putting their variables nested in an if function. That's a matter of style. But I'm going to do it here. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to say hey, find this item to add, which remember we passed it in here in products 001 here. So find that node and clone it. This way I don't have uh, changes making one node uh, affecting another node. So I'm just going to say that's the node I want. And what node is that? It's this node right here. Because remember, we passed in this node right here. We passed in 001. So what has the product ID of 001? It's this node right here. So even though this node, which doesn't have an ID, is the one that is uh, reacting to the click, it's passing in the ID of this node right here. Okay. So once we pass it in, we clone it. So we're getting this node, which will include all of this information and uh, the image and everything. Uh, it passes, it clones the complete node. After we do that, we're going to change the cart item ID. Now, this item here has the ID of 001, and we're going to change that. We're going to change it to cart items plus that 001 in this case, or item to add. And you remember up here when we were uh, looking for to see if that node was found, we searched on cart items plus item ID. Okay, so we're going to change the ID so it's no longer the same node, we cloned it, and we're also going to change the height because in the products we want to display a bigger image. In the cart we just want to give you a, a smaller image. So in this one here the height was 300 but here it's 100. And finally we're going to append this node, the cart item to add, to the cart images. Remember up here we got the cart images. So whereas when we first created the page that cart images didn't have any children, here we're saying append it or make it a child of that. And let's see what happens here. We'll save it. And then we go here, and then when we click Add to Cart, it appends it to the cart images in a smaller image in the cart. And we can continue shopping, and it's still there, even though, remember, that if the node was found, we're not going to do anything. It's still there. Okay, So I'm not creating multiple children, because I'm only creating that child if it is not found, or it's not in the document node. 